Hi students and welcome to this presentation, Understanding the Final Examination. Your final exam will be worth 20% of your course grade. And uh, all of this, by the way, is from the final exam study guide that's posted in this week's folder, also in the final exam assignments folder. 20% uh, of your course grade, and here's the breakdown of items. 20 multiple choice, 10 true false, one matching, four short answer, one performance task that you have to read and do something with, and then an extra credit item. The exam will be released on the Blackboard course shelf on Monday, May 6, and it'll be due no later than midnight on Sunday, May 12. You cannot uh, submit this late. To take the exam, all you have to do is go into the course, go to the assignments folder, open up the, uh, the final exam folder, and start it. You're going to have a maximum of two hours to take the exam. Um, you take it, you, so you must take it in one sitting. So make sure you have set aside the time. If you have a documented accommodation you have sent in, it will be honored. So if that called for time and a half, you're going to get a, um, a test that gives you three hours. If you have that, please send me a reminder so I can set that up for you. You can use your text, notes, and lecture, for anything, any materials to help you. It's completely open book, open notes but you may not work with another person. So what's the best way to prepare for this exam? Well, read the specific information in the study guide. Reread the summaries at the end of each chapter in your textbook. You might go back and view the PowerPoints, especially for the lectures, which you're a little shaky on. And look at the bullets here that we're going to look at in a minute on the study guide and see how many you can do. So everything is based off the student learning outcomes in the syllabus. So that should be a helpful uh, hint about what's going to be on the exam. This is an important thing to consider. The questions will mostly ask you to apply knowledge instead of memorizing information. So don't try to memorize, but try to understand information. For example, a typical question might ask, discuss how you might use performance assessment in the classroom. To answer this question, you must first understand what performance assessment is and how to use it. Do not make the mistake of thinking that because the exam is open book, you will not need to prepare. You will need an understanding of specific content in order to finish the exam on time and do well. So here's some of the content that you'll be, uh, that you'll be asked. Nothing on here is trivia. Nothing is uh, memorizing to kill your little facts. It's about, uh, can you understand and do these things? So the bullets you hear here, see here are the things you should focus on. So will you be, do you know the difference between measurement, test, assessment, and evaluation? Do you understand validity, reliability? Do you, can you identify ways that assessments are not valid or reliable? Do you know what data-driven decision-making is? Can you write learning objectives and learning targets and know what the difference between them is? Do you understand the differences between formative, summative, standardized assessment, portfolios, and performance assessments? Can you describe how to use formative assessment to develop a plan of action for reteaching one or more learning objectives? This is like what we did on the EdTPA. Understand the different types of formats of test items and know when to use each, multiple choice, true, false, matching, fill in the blank, short answer, essay, etc. Know the advantages and disadvantages of those. This is what we were talking about on the quiz project. Identify specific best practices in constructing test or quiz items. Identify and apply components of good feedback, like what you did in part three of the NTPA. Identify the purposes of grading and reporting. Be able to construct a rubric. Identify reasons that students from CL, that CLD students might struggle with assessments and describe strategies to accommodate them. Explain why students' final assessment results should remain confidential, but also how they need to be shared with certain individuals, such as parents and school officials. 
Explain the difference between normative and criterion-based assessments and that each should be used. So in addition to that, understand some things like stay nines and percentiles. Describe when and how it is appropriate to differentiate assessment in the classroom. Use a rationale based on learning objectives to combine and weight grades from different assignments to come up with one overall report card grade. Interpret standardized test scores, including stay nines and percentiles, what I said earlier. Be able to discuss pros and cons of standardized testing. And as always, if you have any questions, please be sure to email me.